Hi, I am Franciszek Zatloukal, Quality Engineer in Ferrara QE, and today I am going to talk about Test Cloud. What is Test Cloud? Test Cloud offers a simple way to create a full-blown virtual machines. <clears throat> you can use it any time you need to test and break something during development, and containers aren't enough for you. You can use its command line interface or in integrate it via Python API to your scripts and projects. Test Cloud comes with workarounds for some distributions that uh, need them in some, some modes. How does it work? It's pretty simple. You ask for a virtual machine, you provide the name of distribution that you want, and Test Cloud will throw SSH connection credentials back, back at you. Test Cloud manages entire virtual machine lifecycle. It supports shortcuts for most of the popular, popular distributions, namely Fedora, Fedora Core OS, CentOS, Ubuntu, and Debian. So you don't have to keep looking for URLs. For Fedora, it also, also supports fetching the latest Rawhide nightly image, uh, latest su successful compose, which might be uh, useful for testing. And, and or CI integration in your projects. Of course, you can use any distribution which provides QCOW image with cloud in it, cloud in it pre installed. Apart from this, Test Cloud also has a me mechanism to inject cloud in it into distributions which don't have it installed by default. This is cu currently a pretty experimental feature and it's supported only on. CentOS Vagrant images, which come without CloudNet included. Uh, Test Cloud uh, does the injection by di directly typing in commands on a serial console. What's inside Test Cloud? Test Cloud is based on libvirt, or specifically its Python bindings on the host, host side, and it's using CloudNet on guest side. Lib libguestfs is used for QCOW images manipulation and it will be used for distribution detection in near future too. Test Cloud basically connects a bunch of virtualization libraries at some secret source. It's open source of course, but <laughs> let's call it secret source. And uh, around those libraries uh, to make them more pleasant to use and wraps, wraps it up in nice package. Thanks to using libvirt, you can also mix and match virtual machine management between Test Cloud and other libvirt compatible tools like uh, Virt Manager or GNOME Boxes, as you wish, and uh, what you find to match your use case. Now it's time for a short demo. So this is the most basic command you can you can uh, use it serves as uh, some demonstration it creates a instance which is in test clouds terminology a virtual machine uh, of uh, latest Fedora release uh, after any uh, instance creation request you can see test cloud outputs uh, um, connection details, connection tips, uh, so you can just copy and paste uh, SSH uh, connection line and uh, connect to the created virtual machine. Now we are creating a Rawhide instance. As you can see, I'm using a different binary name, T7D. Somebody might uh, find it easier, faster to type, so it's, it's there. And of course, test cloud supports uh, bash completion, uh, which you can you might find useful in management of virtual machines you you have you have created with it. Now uh, we can. Apart from standard cloud images, Test Cloud can create uh, a Fedora Core OS uh, instance. Uh, this was contributed by, by Lily from our team.
from further up UA. And now, as you can see, test cloud is downloading an image because uh, I haven't uh, created the Fedora Core OS with this exact image from 25, 25th of uh, July. So test cloud will take care of finding right URL and downloading an image. Apart from specifying uh, shortcuts for distributions and uh, their versions, uh, you can also provide uh, exact URL or even local file path to an QCOW image. Test Cloud will either copy or create a symlink uh, for for you, so uh, you you can save some space with sim symlinking the file. Um, uh, created virtual machines uh, use two-layered storage, so the base image isn't changed in any way. And uh, instead, instead of changing the base image, Test Cloud is uh, leveraging uh, overlay images, which contain all the changed files and changes. So uh, it can grow really fast when when you are doing something like DNF like DNF update. Now we can see we have uh, created the Fedora Core OS instance. Now, uh, this is something I'll talk a little bit uh, later. Uh, we are using uh, Kvemu uh, user session. Uh, this is useful mainly in uh, uh, constrained environments. And uh, this is something you can check out with uh, help help page uh, or manual page of test cloud. Uh, we can also specify memory capacity, which uh, should be granted to the virtual machine. Memory allocation happens on demand, but uh, cleaning uh, cleaning of freed memory inside guest isn't implemented yet. And we have created Ubuntu in user session Kvemu. As you can see, or you will be able to see, uh, whenever you try to specify an invalid release or version, a test cloud will tell you what are supported releases for a specified distribution. By default, it's using latest when if you don't specify a version. And now, just sneak peek on test cloud's config file. You can change defaults like default password, default uh, default host name and even type in some cloud in it scripts uh, which isn't a part of this talk so uh, let's get back a bit to uh, Kvemu user sessions uh, situation is a bit more com complicated whenever you can't use Kvemu system session a test cloud supports Kvemu user sessions and uh, in this case, we can't rely on on having permissions to create bridged connections, bridged uh, networking uh, for DVM. So Test Cloud is working around this by um, adding two network devices to a VM. One uh, serves uh, as a route between guest uh, operating system and uh, internet and the other one uh, is uh, a route uh, for SSH connection. Test Cloud creates port forwarding from, from host to, to guest in, uh, <clears throat> in such scenarios. So you'll have SSH connections on different ports, um, port per, per virtual machine. And uh, thanks to this, you can run Test Cloud basically anywhere it runs in containers, in even un unprivileged containers. It runs in OpenShift pods, and you can even run it on your mobile phone with Android, uh, provided that you can disable Selinux and you need to compile libvirt a bit differently than what's uh, what are defaults for Fedora, but but it works there, so it can run anywhere anywhere in in this mode. 
and uh, what about API? Mm, Test Cloud provides uh, simple and as we will be able to see in a moment uh, Python API uh, taking just a few lines of code uh, to create a virtual machine and uh, on the other hand the API is, is robust and you can customize any step and any configuration or default test cloud uses to, to your, fit your needs. And apart from that, as I've mentioned uh, before, test cloud relies on cloud in it in, in the guest systems, in, in virtual machines. So you have all the possibilities of cloud in it. Uh, specifying a bunch bunch of stuff uh, specifying even custom commands to be to be run custom bash scripts to be run after after a machine machine boots up uh, test cloud is also leveraging cloud in it and uh, these bash scripts to work around some some uh, around some issues in some distributions uh, namely Ubuntu, which isn't using uh, Network Manager, but Systemd, Networkd, and we have to change some default configuration around there, and uh, apart from that, doing some fixing uh, for RHEL 8 cases. So uh, this is just a quick and uh, quick uh, look at some really basic API example. Uh, Uh, in the first line, you can see we are just importing test cloud and its, its parts. Uh, test cloud is internally uh, divided into two basic modules, image and instance. Image serves for operations around uh, distribution base image and uh, overlay storage and instance serves as a object representing uh, something some representation of a virtual machine for libvirt. Uh, on the third line, uh, I am using test cloud uh, utility to get latest Fedora Rawhide image. Uh, there are functions for Ubuntu, CentOS, and Debian. Uh, all of them support different parameters, but th there is there is uh, the code of them of, of these functions is pretty simple and uh, you, you can take a look at it and see what's, what are support, supported values or or it will throw out, throw out an error message uh, saying what, what you can specify as a version. Uh, on fourth line we are creating just an image object and then preparing an image which means it will download uh, a QCOW from remote resource or uh, do a symlink if it's a local path. Uh, on the seventh, uh, seventh line, uh, we are creating an instance object with uh, instance name, which you can you use anything you want or uh, auto generate it from uh, have it auto generated from uh, names uh, of famous people, and we are passing also the image object to, to the instance object. Then we will prepare uh, prepare an instance which does a bunch of magic in, in background. It prepares uh, XML definition uh, of a virtual machine for libvirt and finally it will spawn a VM which will add to libvirt and then we can start it and uh, finally get its, get its uh, IP address. If you were using um, user session, you would also need to call uh, get instance port uh, <coughs> to, to know on which port and the instance runs. Apart from start, we can we can call some usual commands like uh, shutdown, reboot, restart. Uh, you can take a look at instance object uh, in Python, for example, and you will see all the possible functions you can, you can call, call on it or methods to be exact. And some small sneak peek into test cloud roadmap. Um, currently test cloud supports only uh, x80 
86 uh, hosts and guests. Uh, I'm working on changing that and I'm planning to start with 64-bit uh, ARM and I'll continue with adding more if, if there is demand for other architectures. This, is, this will also allow to not only allow test cloud to run on 64-bit ARM but also to create uh, guests ARM 64-bit guests on x86 hosts so that might be another interesting uh, use case for test cloud if you uh, if you would need to test some different different architecture and uh, containers wouldn't suffice there. Uh, plugin architecture is a bit of a big item here. Uh, I'm planning to uh, refactor test cloud code a bit, which uh, got uh, got in rotten state since uh, uh, since it's basically unchanged from uh, Taskoton days where uh, test cloud uh, emerged and uh, having plugin architecture for distribution support would make it easy for anybody to add definition for any distribution specif specify its URL shortcut parsing at workarounds if uh, such distribution would need it and specify some other suitable defaults if they differ from test cloud defaults. Uh, the third item on, on the list is uh, another refactor and, and rewriting uh, because distribution detection is currently handled in a pretty hacky manner which works but is far from ideal because it's based on file name matching due to missing libguestfs bindings on PyPy and since some of uh, our users and um, <coughs> community members are using uh, test clouds uh, from PyPy, installed from PyPy environment and libguestfs isn't there, uh, I'll, I'll take a look and, and work on that. Once that's resolved, the distribution detection code would get refactored to rely on far more re reliable mechanism to detect distributions uh, via libguestfs inspect. Uh, if libguestfs inspect, uh, if libguestfs Python bindings are present currently, test cloud uh, would use use them to detect if uh, uh, you are running rel seven or uh, or a newer, um, and if it's in a <coughs> user session. And in such scenario, test cloud needs to change model of a network adapter. Uh, another point here is uh, a pretty easy fix. Uh, it's ability to easily specify config file on per instance uh, basis from command line interface because currently you can change uh, test cloud settings file and uh, it's applied to any instance you will create from command line interface or and it's used as a default for API unless you are changing that and uh, this will allow you to have a set of configurations and uh, decide and use whenever whatever configuration you need or want and the the last item here is an option to expose SSH as a socket instead of IP or IP end port pair, uh, which is what Tesco currently does even in, in the API side. And uh, being able to use SSH socket would uh, possibly grant you a faster SSH performance and uh, uh, you will be able to use it in more API friendly way uh, than having to parse uh, SSH port and IP address. Uh, I would be glad if you have any ideas or if you uh, hit any issues. I, I wouldn't be glad if you hit any issues, but in case you do, please uh, report them on our uh, test cloud repository. Uh, you can find it on this URL or you can uh, ping me on email that's that's mentioned uh, in, in the bottom of the presentation. And 
now it's time for your questions.